this podcast uses adult language. My name is Kevin. And I'm Elizabeth. And this is the Less Than 83 podcast. How are you doing, Elizabeth? Hanging in there, Kevin. All right. So uh, today we're thinking about talking about NRE. Do you mind giving us a little definition of what NRE is? Sure. NRE stands for New Relationship Energy. And it's kind of that period in the beginning of a relationship, any relationship, where uh, things usually seem very glittery and intense. Uh, You're kind of obsessed with your new partner. They can do no wrong. Everything seems great. You think about them a lot. You know, you have, maybe you have lots of sex. Um, So NRE is a period in most relationships near the beginning where uh, one or both of you is experiencing a high. Yeah. You know, we're social creatures and our brains really incentivize us to connect with other people. And one of the ways it does this for romantic relationships is this phenomena that kind of, if I'm not mistaken, the poly community coined the the term i never really hear it used or have seen it used before the poly community really like brought it up as a topic as, as far as you are aware yeah i've never heard nre discussed in monogamous communities but then i'm not really part of monogamous communities frankly yeah. <laughs> um but yeah i think it's probably accurate to say that the the non-monogamous community coined the phrase NRE. I, we've made up a lot of words to help describe things that show up in other relationship dynamics, but just become more prevalent when you're having multiple relationships. Definitely. So how do you experience NRE? Are you someone who like gets it real hard? Are you somebody who uh, like experiences it slowly? I feel like it's different for everybody. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, I guess, I mean, this is so poly, but it depends so much on the relationship. Like It depends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a newer partner uh, who lives in D.C., two hours away from me, and um, so we talk by texting, like, all the time, every day, but I don't see her but twice a month. So the NRE, in some ways, is like, you have to kind of pace it out. You have to pace yourself in the beginning, or at least I try to, you know, to kind of keep a handle on things <laughs> because NRE can be kind of intense and uh, sometimes your emotions can get out of hand. And we're going to talk about this a little later, but sometimes your NRE can cause harm to other partners or the way that they feel. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of like aspects that really play into NRE, like how you feel it and how those feelings change your behaviors towards your life in general or your current partners. Um, I, at times, have definitely appreciated NRE because it's a nice natural high that you can receive. Yeah. And that, for me, has like spillover effects into my relationships at times, like positively impacting them. But it also oftentimes has caused difficulties because your, your attention especially in my opinion is like really affected when you're in NRE. I coined a term specifically leading group events called the Adonis effect. Mm. Have I taught you about this before? I think you have, but please tell me again. All right. So the Adonis effect is when you see a new metamor only through your current partner's eyes. Mm. And so because you are getting everything filtered through those like new relationship energy glasses of your partner, Like, the person they're talking about is the sexiest, most interesting, funniest person to have ever existed on this planet ever. And it's really hard to compete with that. (laughs) And, like, one of the best cures I have found for that effect specifically. Is it getting to know your metamor? Yeah, it's, like, meeting them face to face. Be like, oh, they've got, like, a slight lisp. Like, they, you know, they have, like, a funny eye or something. Like, (laughs) Like, oh, they're a human being with flaws. Right. And like, they're not this like Greek God Mm -hmm. that I have to compete with. I'm competing with another person who has their own problems, feelings, needs as me. And for me, that has really helped. It can be difficult to take solace in that, especially when you're new to poly, uh, usually because emotions are running high. It's a lot of newly opened relationships are full of, or more likely to be full of insecurities or other things that haven't been processed. Yeah. And that is like a breeding ground for jealousy because jealousy is always like a secondary emotion, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. And it's usually hiding something else. Like 
feeling inadequate, feeling insecure about your own self, feeling insecure about your relationship. Yeah. And if your partner is going through the throes of NRE, it's easy to fall into those traps. Yeah. So are there things that you ask of your partners or your partners have asked of you while you're in NRE to help uh, mitigate some of those effects on your existing relationships? I think the most important thing for me has been keeping our like date days really sacred or trying to stay off our phones if we go out to lunch together or something like that. Like really great that you're experiencing NRE. I'm glad you're having fun with your new relationship, but I'm still here and you know i would really appreciate the the respect of keeping our dates sacrosanct and like if i'm sitting there and you're texting your new partner the entire time i'm going to feel a certain way about that yeah i think that just making sure that we don't like you know skip date days that in during that period and things like that so yeah just i guess keeping the dates really sacred as much as you can, you know. Yeah, I, I think that really definitely helps solidify your feeling of place in the person's life mm-hmm. because that can be difficult to have when you don't have what when you're introduced to this new effect. Like I, I feel like experienced poly people are more likely to be able to recognize it, whereas like a lot of people who are newly opening the relationship will suddenly see this spike in interest in someone else. And feel very, very threatened by it. Yeah. Things to help keep in mind would be just realize that the person is dating you because they care about you and they appreciate you. Hopefully you set up your relationship so that you can reassure yourself with the idea of like, they could leave me if they wanted to and they're not doing that. They want to still have me in their life, even though they're adding someone else in. Right. I actually find that aspect of polyamory really reassuring because, you know, my partners choose me every day. And they could easily not date me. They don't have to date me, you know, like they're not required to. Um, So just the fact that they do choose me over and over is, you know, that in itself is very reassuring. So I know the answer generally to this is going to be it depends. But for sake of understanding, how long do you usually experience NRA for? Like what's what's a good range for you? Or is it like a predictable time? And like it doesn't really depend on the person for you. NRE for me has spanned all the way from like three months to like three years. I think it kind of depends. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, like no, that's that's a it part of depend. the reason why I said I knew part yeah. of the answer was going to be that it depends. Because yeah, it totally. depends on the person and, yeah, and how like, you're connecting. And like how long a relationship is overall, whether or not you share you know, a space together and whether or not you share other partners and like there are just so many factors. It's it's hard to pin that down. It really is a wide range and I think everybody experiences it differently. Awesome. <laughs> I I I'm I'm trying to hold back from talking about myself. I'm a No, I'm I want to like, hear about your I I, I uh, for me like it's really interesting cuz it can span anywhere from a couple months mm-hmm. to about a year. Yeah. And for me like I think I cut off the NRE time based on like what feels like a really extreme change it from my normal Mm -hmm. and so that doesn't happen to me like for as long as three years like you've experienced before yeah uh but also i wanted to chime in with like one of the things that i get a lot of feedback it from my existing partners is that my compressive partners really appreciate that i get like really really giddy and have a lot of like I, I'm always thinking about that person in those uh, in that NRE stage. I'm usually talking about them a lot. And something uh, one of my partners, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is one of my partners just recently started seeing someone. She isn't someone who is normally prone to having NRE, but with the person that she's seeing right now, uh, she has been like in the complete and utter throes of NRE, and it's been kind of funny to witness yeah it's such an interesting state (laughs) yeah we usually don't get to see the full effects of nre because we're trying to be real cool with our partner (laughs) you know that new partner you're like oh yeah no this is totally chill and then you go home and you like explode to your partners or your friends your roommates (laughs) and you're like oh my god this person is so cute or xyz you know whatever things you're really really connecting over uh and i've had partners where that's really difficult for them to hear about that all the time so they're like you need to go talk to uh, your other partner who really, really enjoys hearing about these things because, like, I'm in a rough mood or, like, it's, I'm still trying to cope with all the changes. So you go, you know, nerd out to them for a little while, like, get all everything out and then come back to me and we can, like, chat about regular everyday life. Right. Because, like, I don't want to hear 
for the eighth hour. And like, this is where I'm at. Like every time I hang out with my partner, like the person comes up three or four times. Right. It's, right. it's like funny. Cause like, to me, it doesn't really bother me, especially the state of our relationship right now. But because we're in a transition play- period, her and I just moved apart from each other, which for a lot of relationships, like it's a signal of the end. So we've had a lot of people being like, are you guys still together? Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're still together for the moment. Like we just didn't enjoy living together. And the nice thing about Polly is like, that doesn't have to be a death sentence. Yeah. It doesn't have to be in monogamy, but I feel like the urge to follow the relationship escalator of casually dating, seriously dating, exclusively dating, getting engaged, engagement, marriage. buying the house, getting the house, yeah. 2.5 kids in it. Yeah. The real hard part is the 0.5 kid. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, with that in mind of being expressly explained and expected in our relationships of like, hey, like, I'm not going to follow these parts of the relationship escalator with you right now. Like, that's not what we're really, we're really going for. Being able to change that and be able to like, yeah, we're not good roommates. Like, we're good partners, but like, us living together, we're making each other miserable. Right. It's good to be able to recognize that. Yeah. Yeah. And due to that transition period, like, her experiencing NRE did cause me to feel really insecure in our relationship for a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, we weren't really seeing each other, having regular dates. Um, Even recently, like, we haven't resumed having regular weekly dates because her time with this person is limited. Mm. But I've been able to see each other a lot in the last three or four weeks. But like, I I understand and time can feel precious, especially as like, oh, they're going to be gone for two weeks. That means like we should see each other as much as we humanly can because who right. knows what's going to happen. It's that, <laughs> that new relationship energy. Yeah, it's very intense. It's very intense. They're still bonding and figuring each other out and doing stuff. Yeah. Anyways, rant over. Uh, So those are kind of my thoughts and feelings. Do you have anything else that you want to talk about with NRE that you feel like is really important to know? Well, we've touched briefly on uh, how NRE can positively affect your other relationships. And I think maybe we could cover that a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we talked about insecurity and like jealousy and how those can be kicked off by your current partner um, or you experiencing NRE, mm-hmm. how that can like kind of make your partner feel that a little bit. Do you have any tools or things that you've seen that you want to point out particularly that might be able to help? NRE can sometimes feel like a manic state, I think. Yeah. And so there is a potential to have a lot of energy during that time. And I think that it can be really lovely to let that energy, whether it is like physical or mental or sexual or sensual or in some other way, uh, let that energy spill over into your other relationships because that NRE can really spark, you know, old flames back up and it can start new ones in a positive way. I think that it's always important to take into account how much energy you have for anything. And like so many people have such a, a wide variety of like energy buckets. Yeah. And, you know, NRE can really rejuvenate and revitalize your mental state and even your other relationships, depending on the, you know, the way that you kind of choose to let those rivers flow and like how you choose to acknowledge what you're feeling and what your partners are feeling. Yeah, I would say, you know, don't be too scared of NRE. Look for the positives for sure. Keep open communication as always with your partners about it. So I definitely think, you know, weekly, like moving up your schedule of Mm check-ins if you don't do them weekly can be a helpful uh, change that you can make to your relationship if you have the time for it otherwise just trying to ensure kind of like you request that sanctity of your relationship asking for space where you're not talking about the new person is is a fair ask yeah Uh, you know we're, we're surrounded by lots of people in our lives and you can go on to an anonymous online community to gush about your new partner. You can talk to your partners that do like hearing about that kind of stuff. You can talk to your friends that are poly friendly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, so seek out the community you can gush to and gush to them if your partner is getting or having difficulty coping with that change i like that. I feel like there are so many internet communities. take your pick I mean. Yeah. Um, there are poly forums online everywhere and I feel like, um, you know, really take advantage of that community. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's totally right. 
Yeah, I think the polyamory mm-hmm. subreddit is a good place. Uh, maybe at some point we'll have a social area on the Less Than 83 podcast website. We'll see. Cool. Patent pending. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, this is Kevin, and I'm here with one of my friends. Hi, my name's Rick. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, we had a few things we were thinking about talking about today. You had said that you were interested in maybe talking a little bit about your origin story. Yes. Like how you came to be polyamorous. Mm-hmm. I think one of my favorite things about being in the poly community is everyone's kind of specific origin story. A lot of them are similar, but no two are exactly the same. As far as origin stories go... Um, mine specifically, we, my partner and I met in college and we started dating sort of like a week into our relationship. She was like, so how do you feel about open relationships or seeing other people? And at the time I was pretty young, t- probably like 20 at the time. And I was like, I'm not into it. No, thank you. And we sort of developed our relationship. Uh, As time went on, we got comfortable with each other. We trusted each other. And we developed kind of several like friendships that could have been more had we had the experience or sort of the know-how or the knowledge um, that we have today. And it would something, you know, it was something that we would kind of circle back to every now and then like, hey, remember when you said this? Like, yeah, like, how would you feel about Maybe like, what if we pursued it? And I would definitely say at first we kind of fell into some of those like poly footfalls. Um, (laughs) I I honestly feel like opening a relationship and moving a relationship from monogamous to non-monogamous, you're just walking through a minefield and it's not a horrible thing, but you occasionally land on landmines that you didn't know were there. You didn't know would be a problem that suddenly become a problem or things that like other people have experienced that you'll run into. Yes. And I think a a big example of that is when we first started, we wanted to do everything together, which is I, if you've never been in a poly relationship, you would be like, why is that such like, why is that a poly landfall? Why is that kind of a mine for opening a relationship? Yeah. And the answer is, You've met my partner. We're pretty different people. A little bit. (laughs) And we attract different kinds of people. And part of that is finding someone in common that's going to kind of limit the pool of people that you can potentially date or see. And also, even if you find somebody, you're not going to have the same exact relationship with someone as as somebody else. It's just not going to happen. And if you're kind of limiting yourself in that way like hey we have to do this together it's unfair to the person you're bringing in it's unfair to the relationship it's just not not super great well it's also just really really difficult finding one person who's interested in me is hard finding somebody that'd be interested in me and my partner is exponentially harder and then just trying to find somebody that not only likes me but who i am interested in is is just another level of difficulty that you have chemistry with that your partner has chemistry with yeah. that your partners 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 have chemistry with and it's definitely it was definitely one of those things where it was a good learning experience and you kind of have to take things at your own pace so for us we we I'm putting air quotes up dated um this one girl for a while and it was okay we had a lot of fun there was a lot of hanging out but nothing really kind of past that um, kind of surface level stuff was happening and then it didn't work out and we all kind of went our, our me and my partner stayed together and the third the third she left and then we met another partner who we dated for a while a long while and at the end of the day the relationships were my relationship to her was very different than my partner's relationship to yeah. her and we kind of that was one of those moments that we had where we're like, this isn't developing. We, we are developing relationships separately from each other with the same person, but they're happening at different speeds. So that was like kind of a big moment for us to kind of like 
open up was realizing like you have to develop relationships and let them give them the space and trust to grow. That's part of polyamory and, and kind of being open. Yeah. Um, I mean, in my own experiences, even outside of trying to date, uh, you know, as a couple or, you know, I, I have had experience in the past where for me, it's been a little bit differently. I have very rarely overtly tried to date somebody that my partners were dating or tried to have one of my partners date another partner. But it happens that I, some of the people who I date have similar tastes in people as I do. And so we'll end up developing mutual relationships at different times. Uh, but when I look back at my own life and my own relationships, every relationship I've had is different. It's always felt different. And it was a big kind of like dawning moment for me to realize like, oh, this happens with other people as well. Like other people are going to have a completely different relationship and different feelings to my partner you know, than I am. And that's a normal, healthy part of relationships. Exactly. And, and sort of as that first big relationship was wrapping up, we were sort of coming to this realization together that if we're, if this is something we want to continue doing, we're probably going to need to do it separately, at least for a little while while we're getting our feet underneath of us and figuring it out. Yeah. So for a very long time after that relationship, it was like we were seeing people just like completely separately. We didn't want them to like really, it's not that we had anything against each other having relationships with them, but we were, we really wanted it to be separate and strong on their own. That way they could have that space and growth that's needed so i would say we we were dating separately for a while and then eventually we kind of got to i guess like most recently we've been seeing the local uh poly support groups we've been going to meetings and it's been a lot of fun meeting people and that's another thing that i didn't really realize like how much i would like was going to the poly meetings and meeting similar people and even just having friendships and a poly like a poly setting is really great i've always really felt like it was extremely important when i went to some of my first community meetings i really didn't know what to expect and i'm someone who i'm extraordinarily shy outside of like what people see me when i'm doing things and like presenting or organizing an event i am like a very opposite person that when i'm not in charge when i'm not like the person there to like make sure everything is going and happening and like being the talker, I sit the hell back and I you, relax. You do. And you get a little quiet sometimes. And I, I am a very <laughs> quiet person in uh, group settings with people I'm not familiar with. I'm a ham when I know people I'm really, really close to people or if I'm in charge. Outside of that, I clam up. But it, it, it was really, really helpful for me to go to those meetings and just see other people. So the other people are doing it and happy and are okay and know how to have relationships like this and, you know, have screwed up and still managed to salvage or just like, you know, had those common pitfalls to be able to warn you about was invaluable to me when I was first starting out. It's one of those things where people who are practicing mostly monogamy they have a million different places to pull from yeah as to what a relationship could or should or might look like and for people who are not who are not polyamorous who are or i mean who are not monogamous who are ethically non-monogamous or polyamorous or anything like that there's it's there's not a lot of source material for you to be like oh this is kind of what i like like i really like this in a relationship yeah. or i really like that um oh somebody does it this way i never thought to do that i yeah. like you know, oh I my god that myself. makes so much sense how like why didn't i why didn't i think of that before because <laughs> I mean, we we absorb things through the culture that surrounds us you know for both good and bad and monogamy is the the default relationship structure in the western world that's so true did you did you happen to see today what happened with uh the x-men comics i had seen briefly a few things like come up online but i haven't looked into it but you're, you're a little bit more into comics than i am i believe i am and the most beautiful thing happened in this x-men comic i don't know what this i think it's just called x-men number one they just did a big rebrand or 
rebuild or whatever the way comic books do and they in in the comic book there's a layout of the summer household scott summer cyclops's house and they have the bedrooms laid out and between gene scott and logan they have an open bedroom the three of them share there's they share like a master suite basically and there's no they there it's very open on the floor plan you can see that there's just like doorways but no like physical doors between where their rooms are so they definitely they're sharing basically a, a, a master bedroom between the three of them i know that like from my brief understanding of the x-men universe which is expansive and my experience mostly comes from uh the movies which i know are spotty at best <laughs> in their reputation among fans and the cartoon Oh, the Saturday morning cartoon from when I was a kid was that uh, Wolverine and Cyclops tended really not to get along at all. No, they they and most of the time Gene was in the center of that. Yeah, as, it's as, a kind of like a love triangle. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really nice that they're they're like we're gonna move forward and tell, in what's my opinion a more interesting story. It's it's fresh. It's a breath of fresh air for them to sort of break away from. I mean, is this speculation or is this like confirmed that they're in a non-monogamous relationship? Marvel hasn't officially come out and been like, look, they're a polyamorous and they're in a throuple. So take everything Rick is saying with a <laughs> grain of salt. <laughs> okay. Okay. But I, I do got to say, but there is, uh, before this run started, they just ended this big X-Men event. And at the end of it, they had this big party. And the three of them were like all over each other, like in the panels. And there were oh, okay. several like Gene and there's like one set of panels in particular that was like Gene and Scott holding a six pack of beers and they kind of offer it to Logan. And mm -hmm. it's the three of their hands all on like the six pack of beers, which I know is like, I know it's like, is it reaching, yeah. but they're sharing a master bedroom also. So it's like, yeah. there's definitely, it's definitely, I would say a little subtextual at this point, but I think that it's it's well, we'll have to have you come back when you've read the comic that this is like supposed to be coming come, from. come back in a few months after that Marvel's yeah. had a chance to, to develop it. Flush it out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That'd be great. You can find us on Twitter, through email or on Reddit to submit your questions or to recommend topics. Please reach out to our contact info in the show notes. This episode was edited by Jordan Davis. Music is by Anti Lude and logo designed by Carmen Bolden. <laughs>